You're listening to Hard 9.3 Nigeria Info. That has been a paid announcement. And whenever you hear the 5 p.m. news update, you know it's time for the big hard fact. That means that from now until 6, we're diving deep into one big issue in Nigeria. And today's topic is insurance. We started talking about uh, insurance last week because of the market fires here in Lagos and in Anambra as well. And uh, other types of uh, uh, disasters that insurance covers. And it became clear that there needed to be a lot of sensitivity about insurance and that's what made us do that show and we had such a great conversation and he had so many questions we decided to continue that conversation today today's big hard fact is the same one from last week last year according to the national bureau of statistics nbs insurance contributed 0.5 percent to our gdp so that means that all the money spent in a year by nigerians on buying insurance on their lives their health their property was only half of 1% of Nigeria's GDP. This makes us number 77 in the world, based on data from the OECD. The top African country is South Africa with 1.82%, and that's almost four times our percentage. And the Nigeria Insurance Association, NIA, has said that only 15% of cars on our roads have valid insurance. So for every 20 cars you see on the road, 17 do not have insurance. 17. And I wonder if you're one of them. Last week I told you that uh, I was one of the three. And I wonder if you are one of the three who has insurance. Because what all of this says to us, to me, is that we have a big problem in this country where not a lot of Nigerians have insurance. And there are lots of reasons why that's the case. And we're going to get into that today. But one of the big reasons why uh, that is, is that there simply is not enough awareness about what insurance is and why you need it and how to get it reliably and how to use it when you need it. So let's continue that conversation uh, today. Let's give you more information. Let's talk about some of the challenges challenges and issues in the industry in the industry as well and uh, my experts will do a fantastic job bringing that to you my first guest is uh, Mr. Topway Lesami who was on the show last week as well and um I have a, another insurance expert on the show who's uh, Miss Victoria Adebaju thank you so much for joining us on hard facts thank you Sandra good evening okay good evening Mr. Lesami thanks for joining us on hard facts Thank you so much. Yes, uh, he he's from uh, Consolidated Hallmark Insurance PLC. Now, as usual, you are our most important guest, you who's listening at home or in your car, and we want you to call us with all the questions that you have. And I also want you to share your experiences. You know, do you have insurance? Is it car insurance? Is it fire insurance? Um, how did it go? What made you start getting insurance? Uh, um, if you don't have insurance, why don't you have insurance? Have you ever needed to make a claim on your insurance? How did that go? What happened when you tried to make a claim on your insurance? Uh, Victoria, last week, um, I had uh, Mr. Elesami explain explain to us uh, what insurance was. And he told us that uh, buying an insurance policy against a particular mishap basically ensures that if and when that mishap occurs, the insurance company will pay you money to help handle it. So paid a little bit for fire insurance. Insurance today, for instance, means that if fire burns all, all your goods tomorrow, the insurance company will give you a larger amount of money to replace them. And somebody is listening to me right now, and that person is asking, Are you wishing me evil? Why are you planning for these bad things to happen to me? This is not my portion. To them, what do you say, Victoria? Well, uh, it's not that we are planning that any evil happens to anyone, but the truth is that um, life is all about risk. And every day we go out, we experience one kind of risk or the other. So that is why we advise people to plan ahead of any um, disaster or any eventuality. Something that you have not planned for. It happens to us as human beings. So we need to plan ahead of that. We need to prepare for such things. That's why we encourage people to take insurance. I see. Now, Ms. Ilasami, tell us about the National uh, uh, in- Insurance Industry Database. How is the information there gathered and maintained? Who runs it? 
we we have uh, uh, the NIHIP National Insurance Industry Database, uh, which uh, we are housed the the database of most uh, uh, most insurance customers uh, on their database, and it's managed by uh, a, a private sector in alliance with uh, NIA. And um, that platform gives you the opportunity to check whether the uh, motor vehicle that you are carrying, motor vehicle insurance that you are carrying, uh, or certificate rather, is, uh, is genuine or not. I see. And then uh, it, it, I mentioned last week as well that uh, when I was preparing uh, for this interview, one of the problems uh, with NIACOM, the, the National Insurance Commission, is that it doesn't have a presence at points of sale for insurance, Point such as, uh, yeah, for insurance, such as vehicle license offices. Is that the case? At point of, point, point of sale, point of sale. But point of sale, yes. it doesn't have presence yes. at the point of sale. Yes. I really do not uh, uh, agree with you. Okay. Uh, because uh, uh, each market has, we are, uh, uh, each product has its own market. Mm. Uh, if you go to uh, a licensing office, for instance, mm -hmm. a licensing office is not an insurance company. It's not an insurance office. Uh, we have our agents spread across everywhere. Even at the licensing office, uh, you, you 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 don't have it. You you don't have insurance company position there. But if you ask, if the things were working the way it's supposed to work, mm. uh, uh, the, ordinarily maybe they would have directed you to the next insurance office for you to purchase your insurance. Mm. But as it were now. Uh, insurance is easier to purchase than what uh, the, the, uh, the uh, previous uh, 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 position we had. Mm. Uh, you can buy your insurance online now. Uh, quite a number of insurance companies now place uh, their product online. Mm. Uh, you can buy it. It's so, it's so easy to buy. I see. Victoria, last week, Governor Sonwolu said the state government is ready to partner with insurance, uh, with the insurance industry to improve the lives of Lagosians. What does the in insurance industry need from government, specifically state government? Well, what the insurance industry needs is that the government should support the industry and they should help us to create awareness. You know, um, they can help us also to enforce all these compulsory insurance policies. We have motor insurance that is compulsory. We have group life. By the government enforcing all these policies, then um, they are helping the insurance industry. They are supporting the insurance industry. I see. Let me see. Last so time. We, need, okay. we need the full support of the government for okay. the insurance industry to really... Um, make it to get to the level where we desire to get to. Okay. Missy Lesami, uh, what else do you think uh, the insurance industry needs from the state government? Uh, honestly, the, uh, 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 Mrs. Victoria is uh, actually right. Mm. Uh, we need government to enforce the uh, uh, and implement the uh, various initiatives that surround uh, uh, the compulsory insurance. Mm. Uh, where the, uh, the people also need to be educated. What we are doing is the right step in the right direction. Uh, education of the uh, of the people uh, of the people is quite important for them to know uh, the essence of insurance, what insurance does, what value we bring on board. But government needs to help us to enforce it because if they don't enforce it, people will naturally not buy, and that is the reason why. You see that when you do your 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 needs, you you lift your needs. The the uh, the insurance needs come at the least point of your of your trade of preference. But insurance is necessary. Mm. Insurance the the basic function of government is to protect that man outside there that cannot help himself. That is the top party. Mm. And if the top party that who takes care of him, the vehicle is re, uh, running on the road and. Uh, he does not have the new insurance. If that, if the vehicle hits somebody on the road and he dies, who pays? 
most usually you see Nigerians, they go, we don't really have money. So how, who, who takes responsibility for that man that died? Who takes responsibility for, uh, for the medical, medica, medical expenses? Hmm. But government needs to, uh, to, uh, to think around this and take the implementation of this, uh, the enforcement of insurance uh, by people. They need to take it serious. With that, they will be able to help the, uh, the industry. I, I want to talk about health insurance for a bit. We often hear people, Victoria, uh, uh, yeah. say that we don't have enough healthy people buying insurance and contributing to the pool because people don't uh, buy uh, health insurance often until they think they need it. Won't this lead to the pool being underfunded with too many people making claims and not enough people paying in? Well, I, I want to believe that every insurance company has um, an actuarial valuation uh, that they carry out on on a yearly basis. Uh, as regards the past business they did in the past year. So what I believe is that by the time um, they do this actuarial valuation, then they, they'll be able to get the um, rate that is commensurate to the risk that they are taking. So I don't want to believe that um, by the pool not being big enough, they will, they will be under insurance or people, they won't have enough people or enough money in the pool to settle claims because they should have done their own work to ensure that the rates they charge or the premiums they, the premium they collect are, are, are commensurate with the risk they are going to cover. So it depends on the um, actuarial valuation done by the organization. And I believe they have professionals, every insurance company has professionals that will handle that for them. But it will be better if there can be more awareness and there can be more people doing health insurance. You understand? Mm. So, but the fact that we don't have so much people does not mean that they're not going to make profit or they're going to um, have so much claims. Okay, so so for my new listener, tell me how insurance works. Uh, Mr. Lessami explained it last week, but Victoria, I want you to tell me how it works. Some people we talk to think it's like money doubling, right? Because they cannot understand how it can be that I pay uh, this premium. I just pay this premium. And if I have a problem, you're saying that you're going to give me a much bigger payout. Where is that money coming from, Victoria? Well, ins insurance is like a pool. Where everybody, let's say we have a portfolio. Let's take fire insurance as a portfolio now. That's a class of insurance. And we take the policy holders as um, the members of the pool. It's like a contribution, like we do contribution in our societies, in the community, and people contribute money. At a, at a point, somebody will take the money. You know, you, we, we take numbers, and when you need the money or when it is your turn, you pick the money mm. we, we are, that everybody has contributed. So that is the same way insurance works. In the pool, you have a lot of people, hundreds of people, thousands of people contributing into the, into the pool. And when one person has any issue, let's say a claim, then the insurance company pays the person that has the claim, the money that everybody has contributed. So it's not that um, they, they are just, because I know some people will be asking, how do they get their money? How do they make profit? How do they do? If about 1,000 people in a pool contribute the premium, as in, in form of premium now, they contribute it, and somebody, one or two people have claims. It is that money, that premium that has been, has been contributed by other people that will be used to settle the ones who um, who have claims and at the same time insurance companies do investments when, when when clients pay premium they invest in some other things so it's not that they're just keeping the money there i see you understand i see i see so is, insurance works like a pool hundreds thousands of people contributing so it money works like a susu kind of 
a hair, something like that. Mm, something like that. I see. All right, Missy, let's me. Uh, can you tell me what actuarial, I, I don't know if I'm saying that right, actuarial? Actuarial? Okay. Yeah. Yes. What are those? What are, what are actuarial tables? What are those? Uh, well, it's the rating tables uh, that guide the. Uh, it gives an assessment of uh, the risk. Okay. Uh, trying to compare the previous year's experience uh, on a particular risk okay. and charge appropriate rates. Okay. They also look at the total number of, uh, of occurrences of course. Uh, the uh, total number of occurrences in the past, in both uh, uh, by way of the frequency of such uh, uh, losses and the, and the magnitude of such losses. So they will be able to determine a rate that is appropriate for a particular risk. I see. Now, I ask that question because you often hear concerns that Nigeria's actuarial tables are not up to, to date and that this is affecting the ability of insurance companies to calculate their risk properly. How accurate is that? Uh, actually, you, you, you know, we, we actually lack data uh, uh, in Nigeria. Hmm. And uh, except those data are available, uh, we may not be able to give an appropriate rate for a particular risk. Uh, but what we do now is to also make do with what we have and to see, uh, to ensure that okay, at least we can make profit out of it. I but see. Until we have data, like for instance, the NID data will give us uh, an opportunity to be able to calculate the appropriate rate for motor insurance uh, risk, and that is if we have all the vehicles in Nigeria, for instance, on that particular database. Mm, I so see. then we can now look at it. Okay, this is the frequency of this particular risk nature. Uh, in this particular template, and this is the appropriate data that we can give to it. Okay. Well, if you just joined us, welcome. We're speaking with uh, the Regional Director, Retail West Region, uh, from... Um, uh, hold on, uh, I'm going to Consolidated get Consolidated Hallmark uh, Insurance PLC. And we also have someone who's been insur in insurance for the past 10 years on the show with us. Victoria, I wonder if you agree with the explanation that uh, Miss Elasami gave to us. Yes, um, Mr. Elasami is right because um, it is true that we don't have enough database in Nigeria we are just trying to put up um, the motor insurance database and um, I think the industry is also working on the other classes of insurance so that we can have enough data. Even I believe that the, the, the problem is even from the nation, the old nation, Nigeria itself doesn't have a database. We are just trying to put things right. So, but. With what we have on ground, we we have been making a lot of improvements okay. on how things can be done okay. understand, accurately. Okay. Now, yes. I understand that uh, you worked in insurance underwriting for a long time, right? Yes. yes. What is underwriting? What role does it play in making sure that insurance companies can pay the claims that you and I file? Underwriting is the process of assessing a risk. You know, somebody brings a risk to you. Some, a client says, I want to do insurance for my vehicle. I want to insure my house. And what you do as an underwriter is to assess the risk. Um, you, you give the person the rate that, you know, is commensurable to what the risk is, the risk the, risk the person is exposed to. You calculate the rates and you tell the person the premium he or she is supposed to pay for that risk you want to undertake. I see. So now, that's the process of underwriting. You assess that risk. Somebody brings a risk to you. Mm. You look at the risk. You go, you inspect, you do everything. Mm. And you, you now, based on the assessment, you give the person the rate as in the premium to be to be paid hmm. is the rate that will determine the premium. The rate is a percentage of the sum insured, the value of the property you are going to insure. I see. So it is 
that rate that we use to calculate the premium for the person. I see, I see. Yes. And apart from underwriting, you have also worked a lot in insurance marketing as well. What types of insurance did you sell? Um, I sold general business insurance and I sold life assurance. Um, I have worked in a life um, company before and at the same time I've worked in general insurance companies. I see. What's so, the difference? Yes. Uh, well, the life uh, insurance policy, let me call it, some people call it assurance, some people call it insurance. Hmm. But whichever one you call it, the life aspect is the one that covers individual. Okay. As in, when you're saying um, um, your life now, you want to cover life, it covers death. You understand? It's okay. talking about life. When you say somebody is alive, okay. that is what we mean by life assurance. So it covers people against death okay. but the time and um the scope of cover will now depend on what the person wants we have um time assurance we have all life we have endowment mm. so it depends that one is a long story again if you want to be, begin to go to that but that is life it deals with your life okay covering individuals but when you are talking of general business it deals with properties you have a house you want to insure, you have a vehicle, you have your office, you know, those are general business um, insurance policies. And you can co you cover fire, burglary, uh, goods in transit, marine, all kinds. Those are general insurance businesses. Okay. But life is talking about a particular individual. Okay. All right. Yes. Uh, Victoria, uh, uh, when we come back from this break, I'm going to talk about um, some of the things, some of the reasons that people have shared with you for why they're not buying insurance. I mean, when you're trying to sell, while you're trying to sell insurance, what were the most common reasons why Nigerians refused to buy insurance. That's what you're going to be answering for me after this break. You're listening to Sandra Ezekwesili on 99.3 Nigeria Info. My guests are right here helping you understand insurance. If you have questions, call us after the break and ask the guests. Hard, hard facts. We'll be right back. Thank you. 
Well, 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 welcome, welcome back, back to Hard Facts. Hard Facts. This is a paid announcement. All right, Lagos, Nigeria. This is a job opening announcement coming to you from Kirby, Nigeria. Kirby, Nigeria is an international company here in Lekki, Lagos, and they're recruiting for sales agents right about now. Okay, so, and Kirby, Nigeria is looking for individuals with great personality, strong positive attitude, and people that are aggressive about sales to become her brand ambassadors. Okay, so if you're ready to kickstart a career, then you should please feel free to put a call through to 0807 759 or you could call 0807 759 And of course, Kirby Nigeria would be excited to have you on board. That has been a paid announcement. Lagos, we're continuing our conversation about insurance, why you need it, why it's important, and uh, what the challenges are, what the reasons are for why there's not enough awareness about insurance and there's not enough adoption of insurance. On the show with me are two fantastic guests. Victoria Adegbaju is uh, an expert uh, from the insurance industry, and we also have on the show the Regional Director, Retail West region uh, from Consolidated Hallmark Insurance PLC, Mr. Tokwe Ilesami. If you have questions, feel free to call us on 01277 1993 2993 and 3993. If you're female, call us on 01277 0993 with all of the questions that you have. Before the break, I wanted to find out uh, from our guests today, what are the reasons that Nigerians you try to sell insurance to refuse to buy insurance. I'll start with you, uh, Mr. Elasami. Yeah. Hello? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, uh, the the reasons why Nigerians uh, refuse to or they don't normally buy insurance, I think is partly uh, based on awareness and this is what we are trying to do at the moment mm. uh, through this radio conversation. Mm. Uh, people need to know that this is what uh, the uh, this is the value that insurance will bring to them. Mm. On, until they know, they may not be able to appreciate the value of insurance. Mm. And secondly, uh, whether you like it or not, is whether you are doing or you are doing insurance, you place your insurance with the institutionalized uh, 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 sector that is meant to uh, provide you a cover or maybe you are doing self-insurance. So I think it is valuable for you to uh, to pay a little premium rather than uh, waiting until the loss of call where you need to cover the whole sum of money mm. uh, to be able to miss such losses. I think uh, basically uh, information is required for everybody to know the value of insurance. Uh, we need to spread the news across. Uh, also, I'm sure because of the uh, Poverty, uh, the the poverty level within the uh, society. Of course, uh, people feel that uh, there is only alternative. There is this syndrome of uh, it can never be me over my dead body uh, syndrome. Uh, uh, even uh, in Nigeria, I know it can't happen. It cannot happen. But what if what if it happened? Uh, uh, we I think that's basically that is. Uh, uh, that is driven by uh, poverty level, and of course, you echo defense. You want to defend. It. You want to defend your, the reason why you are not taking up insurance. I have Holy Spirit to cover my things. <laughs> Nothing will happen on me <laughs> and all that. But this thing happened even in the churches. Mm. You find out that even the, the the major churches now they are taking up insurance. I see. We all go to church in the mosque. They take up insurance. I see. So I think basically. The uh, the low financial state of Nigerians too could also account for a reason why they are not taking up insurance. Mm. Well, I think the major reasons why we are uh, people are not doing it is they really do not understand the value of insurance. I would shock you. Mm. Uh, I have a friend that will be moving for well over twenty years or so. Okay, uh, just about two weeks ago. He, he got to know. He, he got. Uh, he got to know what insurance company actually do. Mm. We've been moving together, and I think I've been in this industry now in the last 23 years. So how 
become your own head. Your own friend. Of insurance, you see? <laughs> so that's to tell you mm. how uh, the, the level of uh, uh, issues that we have uh, within the system. So uh, people really don't know. And if they, know, if they know the value, maybe some of them will buy. Then it will reduce the number of people that are actually not buying insurance to those people that are saying, okay, over my dead body for uh, system, I have only go spirits and all that. <laughs> and I think that's the major thing. Uh, Victoria, you've also uh, sold, you told us you sold life, you've sold general business insurance. What were the reasons, uh, the most common reasons why Nigerians refused to buy insurance? Apart from the uh, ones of uh, Mr. Ive for me, as mentioned, mm -hmm. I also discovered that people complain of claim repudiation, at least insurance companies not settling their claim. I see. That insurance companies are giving them excuses when they want to pay premium. Someone they, called they, into the show last week when I had Mr. Ive for me on, and the person also complained about Niger insurance. Well, well, hmm. well. If you have the person's contact, hmm. you can give me. Okay, okay. You can give me because I I handle such cases. Oh, fantastic! But tell me yes. about that claiming thing. Why is that such oh. a big deal? Well, there are so many reasons that could have caused claim repudiation. Okay. Because people don't understand what insurance policy is all about. A lot of people, when they collect their policy document, there's, there's a document to be given to people if they take up insurance. So people, most of them just collect the document and keep. Okay. We have terms and conditions on this document that you have to understand okay. when you take up an insurance policy. But a lot of people are so lazy to go through these things. And we also advise that if you cannot go through them, talk to your lawyer let your lawyer interpret for you. Or even your insurance agent or mm. broker mm -hmm. can interpret it for you. Okay. But don't just take your policy document and keep. So some of the reasons why insurance companies will predate claim mm. may be because of fraudulent issue. Maybe they discover that there's fraud mm. in the um issues they they bring to the insurance company okay. that's number one okay maybe they didn't pay their premium fully it's supposed to be no premium no cover okay you understand okay so some will say i will come and give you my premium one time or the other but they will never do that okay and when claim comes they will now be expecting that ah i maybe i told you verbally they will say ah, i told you that i'm coming to do the insurance or you should commence cover. Mm. You understand? And mm. they didn't pay premium. So I they see. can't expect that something should be done. I it see. is not a verbal instruction. You must follow it up with your premium payment. Then maybe the policy is not in force um, due to um, some issues also. It may be that the policy has expired mm -hmm. and they didn't know on time. Mm -hmm. so a lot of issues like that. It may be The person may have double insurance like you may be planning to make profit. You have, for instance, now if you have motor insurance mm -hmm. and somebody has an injury mm -hmm. in an accident, that same accident, mm -hmm. the person has motor insurance, the person has group personal accident. Mm -hmm. In most cases, you cannot claim on the two policies. You can only claim on one. Mm -hmm. So if one policy has settled you mm -hmm. on an event, mm -hmm. then you cannot go to the other insurance company to say you want to claim. I see. You cannot make profit in insurance. I see. That is our policy. I see. What the insurance is all about is to bring you back to the state, the original state where you were before. The incident happened. How frequently are premiums paid? Is it monthly? Is it quarterly? Is it annually? For, for general business, it's usually annually. Okay. And for life businesses, as in life insurance policies, mm. it depends on the agreement. You can pay monthly, you can pay quarterly, mm. you can pay annually or half yearly. Mm. So it depends on the policy you are taking. Okay. And you now agree with the insurance company your terms of payment when you want to pay. Okay, let me bring then, this conversation. Okay, go ahead. You are making a point. Go ahead. I wanted to say also that if there is a breach of contract, mm. 
in insurance policies, you have conditions, you have warranties, you have clauses. So if you don't follow the instructions or the warranty or the clauses we put on our on our policy document, mm. and if anything happens, that's the first thing we will point out. Okay. If you are supposed to buy a fire extinguisher and you don't buy it and there's a fire outbreak in your premises, then we will penalize you for that. Okay. All right. Yes. Let me bring the conversation over to you who's listening at home or in your car, or in your office. Have you ever needed to make a claim on your insurance? How did it go? Have you ever needed to make a claim on your insurance? How did it go? 01277 0993 01277 1993 01277 2993 and 01277 3993. You can also send us a WhatsApp message. WhatsApp is 080 959 Hello? Hello? Turn your radio off and then let's talk. Hello? Yeah, yeah. Good evening. Good evening. Sandra. What's your name? I'm Benjamin. All right, Benjamin. Go um, ahead. I'm calling from Aja. I did um, an insurance plan that was 2016. Okay. You know, I I do it. I ride a tricycle, so I used it in paying the. I I put in for three years. Okay. So I paid for two years to Niger Insurance. Okay. So it got the time when I couldn't raise more money to pay. So I now decided to back out. But if I could collect that money, as in I went through hell, we even went to the company to fight big series of trouble. Those people almost killed me. I couldn't even sleep because of my money. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, they had to split the money into three places for 400000 to pay me. And it took them more than three months to pay each one. Before the each money could even come, I've already spent the one they even gave me. I couldn't even do anything meaningful with that money. Hmm. I see. Victoria, so what is happening here, Victoria? Well, I wanted to find out, is it a tricycle that he said he insured? Yes. Or what? A tricycle. And yeah, a tricycle. Mean... No, I didn't do it for the tricycle. I did it as a saving plan. Okay, that is life. That's so why I and you did out not that pay your premium. Yeah, okay. I now I now feel the form to back out. They said I should stay for seven working weeks. That before then it would have matured for them to pay me. After that, it comes today, comes tomorrow. I spend more than thirty thousand for transport from a judge to CMS every blessed day. We do even sleep at the office. Sometimes we want to even take a mat and bed to the office. We even block the entrance. As of last year. I went through hell. What insurance company was that? Niger Insurance. Hmm. Okay. I went through hell. Even up to date, I'm still owing the, the woman that, that helped me in paying the money, the agent, the, the marketer. I told her that I won't pay her that money, the 20000 I'm owing her, because I spent a lot for transport. I just passed because I heard your program and I said I should call. Okay. Michael, thank you. I've been you still hurt me. I'm scared of the insurance company today. No, I, no. Thanks for I, calling I, me, I, Benjamin. Mm. Go ahead, Victoria. Okay, I think what happened, mm. he didn't understand the kind of policy he took. Okay. Because the way he mentioned it now, he said they paid him three times. Normally in life assurance, there's a policy we have like that, that you have to, you have to take first 25%, okay. the next 50%, and the last. 100% as in another 50%. Okay. They divide it into two. They'll pay you 25% first. Okay, another 25 then another 50 making 100%. They'll okay. pay you three times. So I think that is the kind of policy he took and he did not understand. I see. So, of course, by the time anything happens, and he also mentioned it that he did not fully pay his premium. And you mentioned no premium, no cover, huh? Yes. Uh, Mr. Lassami, you wanted to say premium. something. Uh, actually, actually uh, uh, Mrs. Victoria has uh, said what was on my mind. Okay. Because uh, you, as a customer or a client to insurance uh, companies, mm. I think the major challenge we have in our industry is that people don't read, they don't really need to read our policy document. Okay. If they read this policy document, they will know the type of contract they enter into. Okay. And uh, the policy document stated from the beginning to the end. 
right from the start of the contract up to up to the time that you are terminating, you are exiting the contract. Okay. So the is the conditions are clear there. If you want to exit, this are the measure that will be taken when you are exiting. I see. Uh, uh, if the last caller said you only paid for two years as against three years. Uh, on the dot of two years, he said, okay, he just needed to exit. Okay. So there are conditions that are attached to that type, to that type of exit. I see. Well, he should go back to the policy document. I'm sure if he read, if he had read it, mm. he, he would have seen the uh, the the procedure for exiting. I see. Uh, most usually, most of these uh, uh, life insurance uh, 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 variants has a way of uh, how they pay because part of this premium that is paying mm. a part of it is are uh, paid against life the other ones are paid against uh, uh, for investment mm. in case within the period of insurance if the uh, the insured died within that period the the uh, the sum assured will be paid to the insured are you getting it now okay. so so if the uh, if you can conclude if you can complete that period all his savings with his interest will be paid back to him. But if he needed to exit before the uh, terminal date of that particular cover, there are procedures for exiting. And I think that is the major issue that he had. You see, um, Ms. Ilasami, we, 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 we have a very poor population. Nigeria... Putting, well, Nigeria is putting more people into poverty than any other nation on earth. We've seen that in Asia, micro insurance is being introduced for poorer people and people in the informal economy. They say it's like microfinance. How does it work? And is it available here in Nigeria? It's available. The, the advent of financial inclusion will, always, uh, will make everything easier because even the insurance companies themselves they are, they, they, they've seen where the critical mass is within the Nigerian population. So, and they know that it's, uh, with this micro product that they can really make a whole lot of money and they will be able to touch people. The insurance companies they are coming up with various products now that are relevant or that can treat the needs of various segments of the people within the society. Mm. So it's, 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 it's available. Okay. So many insurance companies are going into micro-insurance now. Okay. Okay. Even in my company, we just, we, we're about uh, getting a license for micro-insurance. Insurance, great. Yeah. Now, we, 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 we got that call from that man who did not mm. understand his policy, and now he's yeah. feeling cheated. We all know that we have very, very different education levels in Nigeria. Doesn't the insurance broker have a duty to make sure the buyer understands the policy? And this is a question that you're both going to answer for me, but I'll start with you, Mr. Lesomi. Well, the, the uh, insurance brokers are the professionals. Uh, it's just like the middlemen in between the insured and the underwriters. Uh, the basic function of the insurance uh, broker is to protect the insured and to guide their thoughts, to guide uh, uh, the product, sorry, their need uh, against the product that they are buying, mm. to, to, to ensure that those needs fit into the product uh, that, that they are buying. And it's also their, part of their function to educate the clients that this is the product I'm buying for you, and this is uh, part of your need that this particular product will treat. I see. Now, are the brokers aware that they should be doing this education, Victoria? Well, I what I want to let me just say something about the man first. Okay. Because the way he said it is like he did not use a broker. Okay. Yeah. If he had used a broker, it would have been a different issue because that one would handle the case for him very well. Okay. So I think that was where the challenge started from. Okay. So, but. The broker is supposed to um, fight on behalf of the client. That is the insurer. Okay. And there are professionals um, that have been licensed to do that job. Okay. So using a broker is something that is very good. It's something that I would advise the public to do. Okay. If you have any insurance transaction you want to do, it's good to always go through a broker because it makes it easy for you. Even all these policy documents you cannot read. Mm. They will read for you and interpret. I see. 
Okay. Yes. If you have a few more thoughts to share on the show, call us on 01277-0993, 01277-1993, 0127-2993, and 0127-3993. Missy, let's tell me, if we 